Cooper Rush started. Connor McGovern was playing center. Yep. Josh Ball was playing left tackle as Tyler Smith was not available. Seattle going with a lot of their starters. Lockett was in there. Geno Smith is in there for a little bit. He eventually gets named the starter by Pete Carroll. Cowboys defense gets a bunch of turnovers. Uh, but I thought Cooper Rush uh, was – I thought Cooper Rush and Will Greer were, were pretty awful. So Will, – Will, Will, was, Will was really, really bad, I thought. It, it's tough. So I have – it's I've, tough. I, I've got Will Greer in the good category. From the game? Yes. Did he do enough to take the job? I don't know. No, he did not. But here's what I know. Did you not? Uh, do, 12 could, of 22 for 88 yards. It was not great. That, that, I'm not saying the statistics look great. Did but have it also, two touchdowns and the rating was a 94.5. And it's tough. And he ran for another 26 yards. It's yeah, tough. The running was the only highlight for me. It, it's tough for... I think Will Greer to get anything going behind that offensive line, especially when Josh Ball yeah. was awful at left tackle. And by the way, for you know, we we He had, really legitimately looks like a dude that and I'm sorry to the Ball family if they're listening. You went out in Deep Ellum, you went out to any bar club Friday night, you picked a bouncer, and you said you're gonna come out here and you're gonna play tackle in the National Football League. That's what that's what it looks like every week with poor Josh Ball. Yeah, I think a bouncer would play with some more power. Um, <laughs> the, the here's the the thing is that, and we go back to this point of hey, you know, uh, Mike McCarthy. He said the other day that if the season started today before Tyron got hurt, Connor McGovern would start at left guard. Well, if you need any more evidence just to not believe what Mike McCarthy says about lineups or anything else, or, or to take it with a grain of salt, you can take the fact that in the pregame show, the Dallas Cowboys radio network pregame show, doing an interview with Brad Sham, he says, we're starting Matt Well, let's go at left tackle tonight. And then they start Josh Ball. He's, he told Brad that? Yes, he told Brad, well, let's go starting at left tackle tonight. He's lying about who's starting at left tackle in the third preseason What's he game. What's throwing off the Seahawks? What? It's like treating it like state secrets. It's the third preseason game. Just just settle down a little. Why did McGovern play center? He had, uh, McCarthy, Why not play, well, McCarthy well, well, had talked about that dirt on Wednesday um, and said that they were planning on playing McGovern at center. Um, and, and I think it's just because they recognize he's – you know, a the way McCarthy talked about it during the week was, hey, we just want guys who can, you know, kind of cover some other bases. We'd like him to get some reps at center. We've been practicing him there, which they have. They've practiced Connor McGovern at center a few times. Um, but I think it was just about getting him some reps in so that that he could, uh, you know, get some game speed action instead of just in preseason stuff. But man, the the Josh Ball experiment at left tackle looked really, really bad. And and so with that in front of Will Greer for much of the first half, I I, I don't know how much we can can totally blame because he was running for his life in a lot of ways. Um, and, and I think when you look at Cooper Rush, I know people couldn't see it on the TV broadcast, but that very first series, that very first third down, they get third and four, and you get one of the Seahawks defenders jumps off sides. They know they have the free play. It's a preseason game with the free play. Simi Fajoko is running down the seam wide open. He's got 30, 40 yard catch easy. And what does Cooper Rush do? He he throws it underneath to the dragging, you know, Jake Ferguson. Even in a preseason game where he knows he has the penalty and he's got a wide open receiver, Cooper Rush played it safe. Will Greer doesn't want to play it safe. He plays with some moxie. He is tough. I, I think a lot of people were able to see that the other night. He'll take some hits. He'll welcome yeah. some physicality. And I don't think Cooper Rush does that. And I think you saw immediately with Will Greer in there, they ran more of what looks like their normal offense than they do with Cooper Rush because Will Greer is able to do some of the RPO stuff. He's able to move around and, and you know, use some of that athleticism in the pocket similar to Dak. So to me, it's if Dak goes down, the guy who you can keep the greater majority of your offense in place, the guy who will play with the same sort of toughness as Dak and take some chances in these games and, and not just have to have you playing a, a conservative, let's play everything underneath and nothing else, that guy's Will Greer to me easily. All right, I'm just going to kind of go in order here. Okay. Um, well, I, I guess let's start with the intro clip. All this talk about Tyler Smith, first round, left tackle, offensive line. How about Sam Williams? He beats the number nine pick in the draft, Charles Cross. Yep. Showed off a lot of power. Brian Baldinger on the NFL Network kind of featured and focused on Sam 
from this game. You had the bad with another penalty, had the stupid late hit. He got a rough in the passer penalty in week one, uh, illegal hands to the face in week two, uh, and then he was in the spotlight for this up, down, star, one way or the other when it comes to the second round pick. Yeah, to me, the, I had Sam Williams in good and bad. Every game I try and go like, who's good, who's bad, who gave us a little bit of both? And I think Sam Williams was a little bit of both. I know he flashed with that sack, and there were a few times where you saw him really collapsing the pocket and making some plays. There's a little bit of this tendency right now from Sam Williams, as is the case with a lot of young pass rushers. He's he's not sure what to do. He doesn't have a very defined pass rush plan when he gets off the, the ball. He's got great get off. Uh, you know, he's a 4-4 type of athlete. He plays with a lot of power. So I think he's used to being able to either run around the corner around somebody or just bull rush somebody and then shed him and then sack the quarterback. And that's worked from time to time. But I don't. he's not going to be able to consistently win that way. And so I think you saw him get stonewalled a couple times in this game. It worked a few times, but uh, there were other times where he got, you know, blocked off the ball or, or because that get off is so good, you'd get some tackles on their heels and he was able to to take advantage of that. But good and bad for him. I think it's just going to take some time for him to develop pass rush moves. There's, there's a larger learning curve. It used to be quarterback, sometimes receiver, where the learning curve was the, sh the steepest uh, coming Wait. into the league. It's now pass rush, I think. You think pass rush mm -hmm. is the steepest? Yeah, because guys come to the league, they don't know how to use their hands, their their pass rush technique. But They're you'd think with the way football is going, all passing, college, shotgun, spread it out, all passing, that you'd be focusing and, 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 and know how to pass rush coming out of college. Just like receivers have like this extra advantage. People feel like rookie receiving classes are going to, you know, shoot straight to the sky. You're 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 going after the quarterback even in college, right? Uh, but it has become such a quick throw game that you have to win quickly, which he can win quickly at that level. Because we talk about what a talent deficit there is on the offensive line in the NFL. When you like jump it down to the college level, and you've got an NFL type of future at pass rush with, with Sam Williams, then he's going to be able to take advantage with his athleticism over guys who are never going to make it to the league, that they're going to be doing, you know, regular nine to five jobs into the future. Where is Sam Williams in the DN rotation? I think he's going to be used largely as a, you know, third and long passing situations type of pin your ears back wide nine, which is basically just really wide alignment and just try and, and get to the quarterback. Um, they have used him some, interestingly enough. I was surprised by this when we saw it in camp, but we've seen him in camp, we've seen some of these games. They've lined him up at three-technique defensive tackle. They've kicked him inside in some of these third and long situations mm. and tried to get him to take advantage of that get-off. Because we talked about when Tyler Smith moved to guard, the bigger challenge there was it happens fast. They're right on top of you. They hit you right at the snap. Whereas with tackle, you've got a chance to get into your set and catch them a little bit. Sam Williams is a guy with that insane get off. You can take advantage of that at three technique because you can shoot the gap pretty quickly. Yeah.